Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel here, Tommy's Tesla Tech and Travel. Today's gonna to encompass a little bit of all that. Uh, we have a big trip coming up soon where we're gonna be driving to Northern California, which I can't wait to share with you guys. But before that, we're actually gonna be heading to Phoenix Fan Fusion, which is a Comic-Con up in Phoenix, Arizona. We live down here in Tucson. And I think that's gonna be a really interesting trip because I'll be going with my kids, my wife, and the Tesla. So we're gonna see if four people can travel comfortably. Granted, a short distance trip over a small amount of time we're gonna have a quite a quite a bit of stuff but here's the kicker i'm actually heading up early for a small convention and since travel is part of the title i thought it'd be nice to show you guys what it's like to go do the comic cons i enjoy doing so i'm gonna go to a small one today with some friends to help celebrate a friend's 40th birthday i'm gonna stay overnight and we're gonna go out tonight as well and i'm driving up by myself in the tesla today um, i'm gonna show you what it's like charging on these short trips and then we're gonna show you what it's like charging on the long trips granted i don't have to do a big charging session today but i think it'd be interesting to show you guys how it works but come along with us follow us have some fun we're gonna look at some comic books talk about some tech and who knows what else might happen i'll see you when i get to phoenix So we're at our only charging stop between here and Phoenix, and to be honest, it's completely unnecessary. The reason I decided to do it just has some extra power once I get to Phoenix. And I know people's number one concern is, oh God, I don't have time to stop and charge, that's why a gas car is so much better. But the reality is, I've been here for like 10 minutes, got some food, walk around, rest my legs, and I'm ready to go again. Is it true that it costs so much more to charge a car than regular gas? No, I've already put about 20% on my car and I'm at $2.59. It is a myth. It is not more expensive to charge a Tesla than it is to drive a gas car. You know, I actually want to touch on something I said back there at our last stop about the whole charging situation. Uh, the number one thing that people ask me about when I run into them on the street, they see my car, or just you know want to engage about whatever, is oh man, how long do those charging stops take? You no, know, on average, roughly about 20 minutes. That's what I gave. Usually, if it says you need 15 minutes to carry on to the next destination, I'll still go about 20 just to have that little bit of overage. That being said, it's really not that long. If you stop and fill up your fuel tank, your ice engine, or your ice car, uh, you're looking at maybe, what, five to 10 minutes to stop? So you're in there, fill your car, run the car, do whatever. So it's not really that much longer, subjectively, of course, but it's really not that much longer, depending on who you talk to. But I want you to look at it from this perspective, too. Like, I have two small children. When we travel, we stop, we let them get out and stretch their legs for that 20 minutes or so. Um, and you have to remember, a lot of these charging stations aren't in the middle of these giant metropolises. They're all along like, our interstates and our highways. And a lot of them are in really small towns that no one would stop in otherwise. I mean, the same reason that Route 66 finally went to the wayside is the fact that people didn't use it anymore and these towns dried up because there was no, no economy coming in from outside. So all these places, like when I drove from here to Florida, you know, we stopped in places like uh, Stockton, Florida, Florida, sorry, Stockton, Texas, and things like that, Fort Stockton, Texas, these really small towns and we got there and we actually patronized the businesses while we were waiting that normally we wouldn't have. So these charging stations not only, yeah, they take an extra 10 minutes, but they fuel the economies that we're in and help us see a new side of America that's been kind of long forgotten. Like right now between Tucson and Phoenix, the only real stop is Casa Grande. And yes, I know as a native Arizonan, we say Casa Grande, it's a colloquialism. We all know it's Casa Grande, but we say Casa Grande, get over it. With that being said, I stopped there and I stopped and got food. I did a little lap around and I was only stopped for 15 minutes. I even had a bathroom break. So the charging stations, yes, maybe take five to 10 minutes more, but the reality is you actually get to see a different side of America you don't normally see or stop in places you don't normally stop. And as you saw in that video, my charge for my car to go from 58% all the way up to 85% was less than $3. That's like putting a quarter tank of gas in your car, which let's say, what, 12, 15 bucks for a quarter tank right now, if you have a 15 or 14 gallon tank. So it has its advantages, it has its disadvantages. I'm a big fan of the advantages, hence I have the car that I have. But let's not touch on that because that's always the most common question. Well, how do you do the charges? And doesn't that drive you crazy? And isn't it too expensive? No, it's actually cheaper. It gives you time to relax and it lets you get out and explore new parts of the country you wouldn't have normally seen otherwise if you're doing long distance trips like I am. So, a little fun talk, thought I'd bring that with you. Next stop, Fantastic World Comic Con. 
So good news, got to my final destination. There's actually a charge point slow charger, which is actually gonna be very helpful because now I can charge while I'm doing my comic book thing. And cool side note, there's a Rivian truck parked right behind us charging. The things you see when you get to Scottsdale. All right, just got done at the comic book show with some of my friends. You saw that quick little sneak bit of footage. It was awesome because I haven't been to a show like that in years where it was old school, mom and pop, but there were so many great books there. Even got a chance to see a Ninja Turtles number one first printing. I sent out the 32 grand they were asking. I was a little short. But I did pick out a couple key books I've been looking for. I actually completed my entire 1968 Marvel premiere run with the Silver Surfer number one and a Nick Fury number one. Uh, we just won't tell my wife about the former there. But now going back to my car, grab some lunch. And actually, I told you earlier, I lucked out. I got a charger really close by. We're gonna go see how much it actually charged in the three hours I was at the show. Let's check it out. Yep, that Rivian truck is still charging next to my Model 3. Beautiful the car. Time for lunch. Oh yeah. One of my favorite comic shops here in Scottsdale slash Phoenix. Well, successful trip to the comic shop, but my wife might be divorcing me. Hmm. Well, I hope she still loves me after this. And we now made it to our final destination, the AC Hotel in downtown Phoenix. All right, officially checked in the hotel, got everything unpacked, ready to take a little power nap, maybe power shower before heading out with my friends for the evening. And I realized I never talked about how much it cost me to charge while I was sitting there at that comic book show earlier. And sorry I didn't show more of the comic book show. It's a really small one. I felt kind of weird going up to like one of the 40 people there and being like, hey, I'm recording everybody, pay attention. Um, but at that charge point station, which is not a Tesla station, mind you, that's what I'm saying. There's all these third party places out there to charge. And the reason I parked there is because A, it was an open parking spot and there was really minimal parking where I was. And I figured, hey, I might as well put more power on my car since there's not a charging station nearby where I'm staying. And for the three and a half hours I was there, it charged me a grand total of $1.88. And that put an extra 55 miles on my car. So it really is a myth that fuel, A, costs more, or B, electricity is not as efficient as using fuel. If you can find the right spots and plan your trip accordingly, which most of the time, the car plans itself for you, you just have to type in the address. It really is not a huge difference than using a fuel car or ICE engine. So all in all, it costs me about $5 to drive from Tucson to here, as opposed to a very full tank. And granted, I'm not counting the amount of electricity and charge I had when I first started, which was at 93% this morning, but I charged overnight for that and it's about 13 cents a kilowatt hour, so it may have cost me like three or four bucks overnight. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Maybe we'll talk more tomorrow as I might go to another comic book shop before I head home. But I really appreciate you watching this video, giving me a chance. It's only my second one, so hopefully it'll just get better and better. But from Tommy's Tesla Tech and Travel, I will talk to you later. So our little PS to our current video. Something I've been worried about for a while. Now that more Teslas are becoming more readily available for folks, people's orders are coming in. This is now the second time I had to wait in like a week just to charge my car. I tried, I know there's a spot open, but unfortunately that charging station isn't working. So I'll just be prepared to wait a little bit before you charge your car in some locations, especially on the weekend, like like right now, I'm here on a Sunday. Just gotta get back home, I am down to 20%. I'm needing at least like 55% to get home. So just be prepared to wait.